Welcome, everybody, to State College, Pennsylvania, where Penn State students have been camping out in record numbers all week in anticipation of this evening's showdown with Ohio State. Bill O'Brien's Nittany Lions have surged to five straight wins behind the senior leadership of quarterback Matt McGloin. But tonight, they face their biggest challenge as Urban Meyer's Buckeyes come in. Look only to stay undefeated, but also to enhance Braxton Miller's Heisman hopes. It's a battle for supremacy atop the leaders division of the Big Ten. Football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Beaver Stadium sold out for the first time this season after nearly a year of incredible tragedy, turmoil, and scandal here at Penn State. These Nittany Lion fans are ready to fully focus on a big football game, a battle for first place in the Big Ten Leaders Division. Ohio State's 4 0, Penn State's 3 0. Due to NCAA sanctions, neither team is eligible for the Big Ten Championship game or a bowl game. But should the Buckeyes or Lions win the division, they will be recognized as Leaders Division champions. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Sean McDonough, along with Chris Spielman, will be joined in just a moment or two by Quint Kessinick. A lot of people have said that these two teams don't have much to play for this year. You'd get a strong argument about that when you talk to the players and coaches on each side. Penn State, a winning, brings a lot of happiness, a lot of winning lately. Five straight victories under Bill O'Brien, and the man who's really turned his personal game around and this program around in some ways is Matt McGloin. Yeah, it starts with Matt. And when we talked to Matt, we asked him, he said the reason why is he got confidence after spring ball, he was named the starter. Matt plays with a chip on his shoulder. That chip's gotten bigger. The other thing with Matt is that he embraced the system that was put in by Bill O'Brien. It's a two tight end, three tight end system that Bill had with the New England Patriots. Now, here you're going to see right here, Tom Brady operate this system perfectly like he does. What it does, it's designed to get matchups between safeties and linebackers and take advantage of the size. It depends on the quarterback to be accurate with the football and make the proper read. You saw Tom Brady do it. Now you're going to look at Matt McGloin do it. Again, very easy read, easy throw. He's accurate with the ball, and he's running that system to a team to the fact that he's thrown 14 touchdowns and only two interceptions this year. Penn State football, one of the great stories in college football this season. Ohio State is as well after a 6-7 and seven year last year. First losing season in nearly two decades. Here comes Urban Meyer. They are 8-0. No, it's been a scratch and claw. No, they haven't been pummeling their opponents. He says... We're not a great team, but we've been a great team this year, and their leader is Braxton Miller. Well, you take a look at Braxton, the whole offense runs through him, the passing game, the running game. The thing you worry about Braxton, if you're an Ohio State fan, can he stay healthy? Now, he is one of those rare guys, Sean, that can go the distance anytime. You can shut him out for three quarters, and he pops one for 80. He's done it all year, but can he stay healthy? If he doesn't stay healthy, he's got a pretty good backup in Kenny Guyton. Who helped lead them from behind to beat Purdue and keep them undefeated. One of only 11 remaining undefeated teams in the country. Ohio State and Penn State, the kickoff in a moment. Stadium. It's a whiteout. More than 106,000 fans on hand. Down on the field. Hopefully, he can hear himself. Here's Quick Testing. Braxton Miller, Ohio State's quarterback, did not finish the game last week at Purdue. Tackled viciously, sent to the hospital. He was released on Saturday night and cleared to practice this week. He practiced all week long in a non contact capacity. Trainers and doctors closely monitoring his progress. Complained of a little neck stiffness but he suffered no setbacks this week. Came out 
to do some agilities at 345. He threw at 420. He looks 100% according to the team doctor, Chris Kading. All right, thank you, Quint. Penn State won the toss and deferred, so Ohio State will take the football. Sam Ficken kicks off, and we're underway. Rod Smith, five yards deep, takes a knee. So here comes Braxton Miller. He's left each of their last four games due to injury. Kenny Guyton came to the rescue, led them to their overtime win last week at home against Purdue. Miller, 20th in the country in total offense. He's thrown for 173 per game, and he's rushed for 120. Third leading rushing quarterback in the country. Hands it off to Carlos Hyde. He's been an emerging force over the last month. He's across the 30 for a gain of six. Hyde's averaged 109 yards per game over the last four. Look at Ohio State wants to establish a line of scrimmage because they got manhandled up front against Purdue. Swing pass for Hyde, trying to get outside, and he's run down by the outstanding linebacker, Gerald Hodges. It'll be third now. Let's take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players for Ohio State. Let's we'll start with Carlos Hyde. The addition of Carlos Hyde after the injury is running hard, doing a good job. Corey Brown will be in the backfield along as a receiver. The guy that's really playing well for the Buckeye defense late, lately, number 48, Ryan Shazier. Third down and three. Miller decided to keep it and did not get the first down. Stopped a yard short. Mike Motti, Glenn Carson, Jordan Hill all combining on the stop. Motti, the emotional leader of that defense. Emotional leader making a big physical leadership play right here. Not panicking, eyeing Braxton Miller and coming in and putting a shoulder on him. Good sign for Ohio State that Braxton bumped right back up after a solid shot by Marty. Here's Ben Buchanan, the senior putter. to kick it away to Jesse Della Valley. Ohio State has not been a good kick coverage team. They've allowed both a punt return and a kickoff return for a touchdown this year. And a timeout called by Ohio State. Urban Meyer's never been here as a head coach, but he said his coaches told him this will be the loudest place they will play in the Big Ten this season, and the crowd is making that prediction come true. Just great to see people smiling and happy and walking into this football stadium eager to watch a big football game with everything that has transpired here in the last 12 months. Oh, I just look at what Bill O'Brien and his team, more importantly, this team has done to kind of bring this community together. In the process of healing, frankly, Sean has been helped by winning five games in a row because it gives the people something else to talk about, and that's the football team and, and how well they've done. Let's put the focus on football, what's happening on the field. They lost their first two to Ohio U and Virginia, have reeled off five straight wins. They came after Buchanan and nearly got it. Della Valley decides to forego the fair catch, and he's hit almost immediately by Bryce Haynes. 41-yard punt, two-yard return. Here comes Matt McGloin, the senior from Scranton. But if he's not the most improved quarterback in the country, I have no idea who is. Last year, 54% completions. This year, 62. Last year, he threw eight touchdown passes and five interceptions. This year, as you see, 14 TDs, only two interceptions. He's leading the Big Ten in passing at 255 yards per game. Comes out throwing, caught by Allen Robinson, the leading receiver in the Big Ten with his 48th catch of the year. Good for a five-yard gain. Travis Howard made the tackle at the 30-yard line. You see Penn State use a bunch of different combinations as far as personnel goes. That time, they came out with 10 personnel. That's one back and zero tight ends. Now they go back to the more traditional 21 personnel. 
two backs and one tight end. Bill Belton is the running back due to injuries. They've used a number of running backs this season. Belton the fastest with the group. He's ahead for two. It'll be third down and about four. Zach Boren made the tackle. And he's a big part of the Ohio State story these days. They've been struggling on defense a lot of the year. They moved him just a couple of weeks ago from fullback to linebacker as a senior in college. And what's absolutely amazing to me is the amount of productivity Zach has brought to that position. And maybe more importantly, Sean, stability because they've been struggling at that position all year. Played linebacker in high school. He'd been asking the coaches for a while to play linebacker. Third down four, play fake by McGloin, and a deep ball to an open receiver. Diving catch by Robinson, and he couldn't hang on. He was wide open, and they executed. That's a touchdown. Rare mistake by Matt McGloin. Almost too open, and Matt, one thing he's been is accurate this year. Not on that play. First of all, the ball's underthrown. It would have been a first down, but if you throw it in stride or even underneath him a little bit for to give him time to catch the ball, then he has six points. And it's been Ohio State defense that's been victimized by the big play. Rugby-style punt by Alex Butterworth. The punting has been a big problem here, as has the place kicking. And that's not a good kick by Butterworth, who's averaging less than 36 yards per punt. They're going to mark it at the 43. Just a 24-yard punt. Great starting field position for Braxton Miller and the Buckeyes when we come back. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Back on the campus of Penn State University. Cloudy skies, but very comfortable temperature. 59 degrees of kickoff. Slight chance of rain here tonight. And movement before the snap again. Perhaps the crowd noise a factor as Jack Newhart moved. Offense, number 74. Not only crowd noise, but Penn State was showing a zone blitz pressure. And when you see that as an offensive line lineman, sometimes you get a little bit nervous if you jump. On first and 15, Carlos Hyde straight ahead. Mike Motti had him around the legs. Hyde powered forward for two. Thing you want to look at if you're Ohio State, you want to start throwing the football. I mean, they're clouding that line of scrimmage. They have people up there two, three yards away from the ball. You got to air the ball out a little bit to create some type of room to run the football. Miller has to almost get in the ears of the offensive lineman so they can hear what he's saying. Play clock running down. Four-man rush, and it's almost intercepted. Steven Mobing Ajapong thinking about a pick six as he jumped right in front of Jeff Heiderman, the intended receiver. It's all about missed opportunities. This is the second missed opportunity by Penn State to put points on the board. A big Ajibong had a chance. Reading the quarterback, breaking down the ball. Missed opportunity, though. Chalk that one up. Put that in the memory banks. Pick six has been a big story in this rivalry. The last 10 games, Ohio State has returned seven interceptions for touchdowns over a period of five games, and the Buckeyes have won all five of those. On third and long, Miller throws first down. Great effort after the catch by Jake Stoneburner, dragging the tacklers with him, finally wrestled down by Gerald Hodges. 
14 yards on a first down. Big targets make a difference. Good job by Braxton Miller with his eyes looking to the left, coming back to Stoneburner. Then just the determination to drive those legs to get the first down. But at 6'5", 250 pounds playing split end, that's an advantage you have. He's really been playing well of late, according to his offensive coordinator, Tom Herman. Well, been a traditional tight end of the previous coaching staff. Now they move him around quite a bit. Hyde following the block of Rod Smith. They didn't block his man very well. Adrian Amos came off the attempted block and made the tackle. Three-yard gain. Buckeyes into Penn State territory at the 44-yard line. No score, just more than five minutes play. Good eyes, Sean. You did. Rod Smith threw kind of a nice little soft block right there on the corner. You got to be able to take him out at 230 pounds with Rod Smith. Don't lay into him. Blast him. Good job by Amos. Miller after the fake. Almost intercepted again. Stephon Morris jumped the route and almost picked it off in front of Chris Fields. Missed receivers. He knows where he's going with the ball before he's throwing the ball. Look at Hardman, number 86, sneak into the flat. Just late right there. And Braxton's locking in. Third down and seven. Big part of Penn State's success in the five-game winning streak, third down defense. Their opponents converting at just 24%. Time for Miller. Deep ball, man, open and incomplete. Intended for Corey Brown. So each team has had a chance to throw a long touchdown pass. Had it been completed, then neither could execute. It's a big whoops. I know it's a whoops because I see Morris and Obing Ajapong looking at each other with their hands up, and that's one that you have to convert. Again, blown opportunities, two for Penn State, one for Ohio State to get points on the board. Now here's Buchanan. Certainly a position on the field you have to be alert to a fake. Bill O'Brien says Ohio State causes you problems when you prepare because they give you a lot of different looks with their punt team. Pretty standard there and a fair catch made of Buchanan's punt by Jesse Delavalle. 28-yard punt. Penn State will start at its own 16 when we come back to State College. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. Feel the Hamptonality. And in part by Dove Men Plus Care. Be comfortable in your own skin. Penn State students started sleeping out outside the stadium in what they called Nittanyville, the 10 village, on Monday night. 140 tents this week. That's the largest population ever in Nittanyville, the previous high. 111 back in 2007 for the Notre Dame game. These students were in here as soon as they opened the gates, racing to get the best seats in the student section. Numbers about 21,000. No score. Easily could have been three touchdowns in this game. Teams had a chance to throw a long touchdown pass. They didn't connect on. They could have been a pick six as well. Five-yard game for Bill Belton, and now the Chick-fil-A impact players for Penn State. Start with wide receiver Allen Robinson. Uh, 47 catches coming into the game, 48. Kyle Carter, one of the tight ends we talked about, it could be an impact player, and of course Jordan Hill, the fine defensive tackle. Penn State likes to go very quickly. They had four tight ends in for that play. And it's Gary Gilliam dragging the Ohio State defenders. First down to the 36. Finally, Zach Boren got him on the ground. You know, if you're Penn State, and the matchup you want to look at is Zach Bourne. Why, Zach is very good against the run, but when you make that transition from fullback to linebacker midseason, pass coverage is sometimes the last thing to come around. Look for that as matchups with the tight end and middle linebacker Zach Bourne. After a 15-yard gain, here's Bill Belton ahead for three, and here's Reese Davis with an update. All right, Sean, Tuggle Bell studio update. Colin Klein, Kansas State, hosting Texas Tech. It was a 13-10 game at the half, but 
Wildcats have taken over in the second half. Klein's thrown for a touchdown run for one there is 27-10 in the third. This as we've seen a couple of times this year very good Texas Tech team McGloin throws short good catch in traffic and out of bounds along the near sideline comes Kyle Carter and they throw a flag for a late hit out of bounds. Orion Johnson Christian Bryant involved in the play for the Buckeyes. After the play was over first of all defense number 19. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Kyle Carter, number 87. We talked about the matchup you like, the size of the tight end on the defensive back, Orion Johnson. Good coverage, but the power of Carter carrying Orion Johnson. Orion Johnson, it's a mental error. You don't need that. Be smart, understand, keep your composure in a hostile environment. Couldn't get him to the ground, probably a little frustrated and gave him a shove when they were well out of bounds. So here comes Penn State with the line of scrimmage now, the Ohio State 42 yard line. Catch was good for five, then the 15 yard penalty. The former wide receiver Belton dropped for a loss by C.J. Barnett, the safety. Loss of one. Nice play by Barnett, who had a huge interception in the end zone against Purdue last week. Penn State has remarkable numbers in the first quarter. They've outscored their opponents 66 to nothing. They're the only team in the country that hasn't allowed a point in the first quarter. Ohio State's been outscored in the first quarter. The only period in which they've been outscored this season. Five wide receivers. McLoin surprised by the snap and it threw the whole playoff. Drop for a sack. There is a flag down late. John Simon took down McGloin who was walking toward the line of scrimmage as the ball was snapped. Forward at the snap. He'll definitely turn that down. Illegal motion. Offense, Offense. number 11. Moving forward at the snap. Penalties declined. Third down. Third down. Sometimes you, you can cross yourself up and uh, we see this happening a number of times in college football where the center does not understand when a quarterback is ready and you see John Simon who will give you 100% all the time coming in with the finish. Fourth sack of the year for Simon a senior two time captain. One of only seven two time captains in Ohio State football history Zach Zwinak in at running back he gets the call. And gets chopped down after a game of three. It looked like he was fighting to retain possession of the ball. Zach Bourne, another tackle. So the former fullback's having a big night at linebacker already. Well, Sean, I'm telling you, he is solid against the run. And I, I can't say that's a very difficult transition to make because when you go to middle linebacker, things happen fast in there. Zach's done a good job. Playing fullback helped him make that transition because he blocks those guys all the time. Alex Butterworth got off the punt. And he gets a nice soft bounce for Penn State and goes out of bounds at the three yard line. So after a bit of a shank with his first effort of the night by Butterworth, this one is infinitely better. 44 yard punt, perfectly placed. No score, 542 to go in the first quarter. Student sections made a banner out of that Urban Meyer quote that we referenced earlier that he understands from his coaches this is the loudest place that they will play in the conference. These folks have lived up to that advanced building tonight, and now the Buckeyes start from their own three at the student section end of the stadium. Always a little bit dangerous with a shotgun snap. Especially if the noise is. And it's a Carlos Hyde. It gets them some breathing room out to the nine yard line. A gain of six for Hyde, a junior from Naples, Florida. Missed three games earlier this year, almost three full games with a knee injury.
Penn State crowding the line of scrimmage. Miller bounces outside with running room. And gets thrown down by Stephon Morris. First down for Ohio State after a seven-yard run for the sophomore Braxton Miller. And all set up by Jeff Hartman. Watch him block Hodges, number 86. He's going to pull around and seal him to the inside, swinging his hips. Got away with a little bit of hold, but they're letting him play out there a little bit on both sides. Braxton is a very patient runner, as witnessed. And very much a factor in the... Heisman Trophy speculation right now. Only Jordan Lynch and Denard Robinson have run for more yards per game among quarterbacks nationally than Miller. Three-yard game for Carlos Hyde. The middle linebacker Glenn Parson made the stop. Still going to maintain when I look at Ohio State's offense. To help yourself out, you want to throw the ball a little bit on first down. Especially since the last series, Penn State had a blown coverage. Buckeyes have leaned more heavily on the run, 250 yards rushing per game, 10th in the country. They're 101st in the country in pass offense. Miller ahead for two. Jordan Hill slowed him down. Senior from Steelton, Pennsylvania, having a great senior season. The defensive coordinator, Ted Roof, says that Jordan Hill is the most active defensive lineman he's ever coached, and you said he's the best you've seen on film this year. He is at that inside interior position. There's nobody as active as he is. Great with his hands. Only 295 pounds, but he plays a lot bigger than that, Sean. Very good pass rusher, which is difficult from that interior defensive line position. And he has called this the biggest game of his Penn State career tonight. They won't go to a ball game, but this game has a lot more atmosphere and certainly a much bigger crowd than you'll find at many ball games. Miller zings one too high. Had an open receiver in Devin Smith, but he airmailed him. And Miller having a tough time out of the gate. Two for six passing, and two of his passes have hit Penn State defenders. He had it, too. And Amos is, is giving Devin Smith a little bit of cushion because Devin Smith is the deep threat. Buchanan punts with three minutes to go in the quarter. And Della Valley gets flattened immediately. Excellent coverage by Devin Smith. 40-yard punt, no return. And Smith slow to get up, and that would be a key injury if he has to come out of the ball game. He's their second leading receiver on the year. See Urban Meyer with his head down, and that's the chance that you take when you play your best players and your best athletes on the special teams. You take a chance of somebody getting nicked up like that. Especially your leading receiver and your best deep threat. As they tend to Smith, who's getting back up right now, will step aside. No score, less than three minutes to go, first quarter. First and 10, Penn State, their own 37-yard line. They're going three out of four, passing for 25 yards. Here's Zach Zwinak, more of a powerful inside runner, recruited as a fullback. He's 232 pounds, and he went ahead for three, a sophomore from Frederick, Maryland. I'm telling you what Penn State is setting Ohio State up for a play action pass on first down because they've gone to that play to start the series, the last two series in a row. A play action will be coming off of that. He's going to act again. Good balance. Stay on his feet as he took contact near the line of scrimmage. Zach Morin and Bradley Roby combined on the tackle, but it's a six-yard run for Zwinak, who 
Rushed for 100 yards at Illinois, had 121 in their big home win here against Northwestern when they rallied from 11 down in the second half to win. Now Penn State feels like they can push Ohio State around up front. McGloin, lots of time on third and three, but the pass is batted down to the line of scrimmage. Fourth down and three. They go for fourth down often. And usually it's on the plus side of midfield. They're still in their own territory here, but it looks like Bill O'Brien's going to go for it. He's also going to go for the hard count, but he's not afraid. 14 out of 23 on the year. At 61%, only Louisiana Monroe has converted more fourth downs. 14 conversions is more than any other Big Ten team has attempts on fourth down. Will they snap it? Timeout call with one on the play clock. Their first. And Bill O'Brien, the former Bill Belichick disciple, five years on the staff in New England. Belichick like to go for it on fourth down. O'Brien does too. Well, after the timeout, Bill O'Brien has sent the punt unit out onto the field. Alex Butterworth will punt it away to Corey Brown. I think this is the uh, right choice. Fair catch signaled by Corey Brown. Well, it's a scoreless game, but it easily could be quite a bit different as there have been missed opportunities on both sides. Penn State had the first great chance. Allen Robinson behind the defense. Ball not really on target. And then Obing Ajapong had a chance for a pick six. He dropped it. And then Braxton Miller had Corey Brown wide open and missed him for a touchdown. That's where he wins these close ball games, evenly matched, when you have opportunities to make plays. Great players step up and make them. As the Ohio State offense takes the field, Devin Smith is on the field for the Buckeyes. He was injured momentarily on putt coverage. But he's out there as a weapon for Braxton Miller with Carlos Hyde on his left hip. Blitz off the corner. And the pass seemed to surprise Devin Smith. So that's the right idea. What we're talking about is throwing the ball on first down to loosen him up a little bit. But right now, the timing of Braxton Miller and the accuracy have been off. We have the missed touchdown pass. We have the missed out cut for a first down. And he and Devin Smith weren't on the same page as far as reading the hot read against the coverage. A great atmosphere here, but as you see, we're just the warm-up back for an amazing lineup tonight in the college football on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC. With four straight incompletions, on target is Miller to Evan Spencer. Just his eighth catch of the year for the sophomore. Gerald Hodges made the tackle. They have terrific linebackers and Hodges and Motti in particular. They're two of the 12 semifinals for the Buckus Award as the best linebacker in the country. Penn State, known as linebacker, is the only school in the country that has two of the 12 semifinals. This is where Ted Roof gets a little nervous because of what Braxton Miller can do with his feet on a broken play. Third and three. Miller throws too high over the head of Devin Smith. Amos had coverage, and there is a flag now. Sean, I'm wondering if Braxton Miller is a little hesitant to run. He had the whole side wide open. The offensive line of Ohio State caved in the contain of Penn State. Braxton Miller could have walked for a first down, but he decided to throw the football. See where the personal foul comes right here. Oh, wow. I don't see a personal foul. Oh, wow. He does not see the football. He does not know where the football is. That's a horrible call because he's playing his man and doing his job, and he laid off the hit. Yeah, that is a terrible call. Looked like Jordan Hill is being held there as Miller got it off to Hireman. Excuse me, Nick Manette, the backup tight end. And there 
there across midfield to the 45 yard line. 22 yard gain, longest play today for the Buckeyes. You know, just the threat of a run sucked up the Penn State linebackers, which allowed Van Nett to come across the middle and Braxton delivered on time and on target. First and 10. Miller got it off. Incomplete. Crowd's groaning because it looks like they are allowing an awful lot of holding along the offensive line. Looked like on the previous play, Jordan Hill got taken down. And it looked like there were multiple linemen holding there. Yeah, I still maintain that. I know you want Braxton to become a thrower first, but there are running lanes that he's deciding not to tuck the ball and go. We'll see if that gets addressed on the sidelines once this offense gets off the field. Urban Meyer said the approach wouldn't change. They need Miller to run the ball to be as good as they can be as a team. They weren't going to try to win at his touches because they know they need him to do just that. Carry the football if they're going to have their best chance to win. That's a six-yard run and the tackle made by Michael Maudie. You know, I think Ted Ruth feels comfortable as much as he can with Braxton running on design runs. What gets him nervous is when he scrambles around and makes big plays with his feet off of pressure. Final seconds of the quarter, third down and four. Miller under pressure and sacked. Back of the 46 by Sean Stanley and Pete Massaro. End of the first quarter in State College. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. From Beaver Stadium, State College, Pennsylvania, sellout crowd. And raucous through a scoreless first quarter. Defense is ruling today, although the offenses missed some great opportunities to score on long passes, one for each side. Ben Buchanan, a high punt. And he didn't get a friendly bounce. It'll come out to the 20. Well, the headline game of this weekend is tonight on ABC Saturday Night Football. Heisman hopeful Manti Teo, the fifth-ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish, facing their toughest test of the year as they try to continue a dream season. They're in Oklahoma to take on the eighth-ranked Sooners. Notre Dame 7-0 for the first time since 2002. But Oklahoma, after that one stumble against Kansas State, which doesn't look like as much of a stumble right now and they've rallied back nicely that's eight o'clock tonight on ABC five six McGloin deep down the seam and caught out to the 39 yard line Matt Lehman part of that talented quartet of young tight ends made his 14th catch of the year well Sean we talked about it on first down play action now they're going to their NASCAR series and it's Zach Zwinnick Sliding through, close to another first down. He got nine. John Simon and Christian Bryant made the tackle. When you're struggling with offense, you want to go up tempo to get yourself in a rhythm and a groove. They just had two successful plays in a row, and they get a first down here. Zwinak has another first down. Well, Bill O'Brien says one of the challenges when you play Ohio State, they give you a lot of different defensive looks, but as you go more quickly, the defenses can't get all that tricky. They just have to be solid and line up. Well, this is where Penn State's offense has been its most efficient when they're operating at a high pace. And it gets Matt McGloin in the rhythm that he needs to be in. One of the reasons they can do it, McGloin is very smart. Procedure penalty here against Penn State. Offense, number 84. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. You know, one Matt of the Lehman, the move man there. Thank you, Sean. One of the things you can do as a defense to counter a fast-paced offense. People think that there's only audibles on offense, but you do have audibles on defense where you can put your defense aligned, preset to formations to counter what they do off of those formations. I think it would particularly be challenging for Zach Boren, still trying to learn the defenses. 
McGloin steps up and nearly threw an interception. Broken up by Bradley Roby. It was intended for Allen Robinson. It's interesting talking to Bill O'Brien. So we have not played anybody like Ohio State. And what he was referring to is the talent level across the board and the athletes that Ohio State has brought to Beaver Stadium tonight. And that is the question. How good is Penn State? Their wins over Navy, Temple, Illinois, Northwestern, and Iowa. They hammered the Hawkeyes in Iowa City last week. Clearly playing well on offense the last three weeks. McGloin steps up, throws. For a short completion. Trevor Williams, the true freshman with a sixth catch. That's a big difference in McGloin. You see the Bill O'Brien influence. One of the things that O'Brien worked on with McGloin is pocket presence and awareness. One of the best of all time at that is Tom Brady. That half a step in the right direction to clear a throwing lane by a little extra time. McGloin is so much better at that than he was a year ago. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when you're a shorter quarterback like Matt is, a lot of times that footwork you use and you've been doing it your whole life to find throwing lanes and Bill O'Brien has enhanced his ability. They list him at 6-1. He's not that tall. He gets it off. It's a wobbler as he was hit as he threw it. It's interesting what Bill O'Brien said. He said at his age, 22 years old, he's been playing quarterback most of his life. He really can't change his throwing mechanics dramatically. He's used to doing it. It's too ingrained. There are little things. They try to get him to keep his elbow a little bit higher in the delivery. To point his left shoulder at the target rather than throw with his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage. But for the most part, you have to work with what he's already developed. Well, it's like a golf swing. I mean, you're not going to change muscle memory overnight and you try to adjust his feet and make him throw with his feet. But that's when I know Bill O'Brien was a good coach because he recognizes he's not a miracle worker in changing somebody's throwing motion. And a good job by Butterworth. He has rebounded from that shaky first punt. Pin the Buckeyes deep a couple of times. This is a 37-yarder, and Ohio State will start. Aaron Meyer and the Ohio State Buckeyes with the football. Pin deep in their own territory again at their own six. No score. Early second quarter. Braxton Miller gave it to Carlos Hyde. Bounces off the pile. Turned it into about a six-yard gain. Here's Quint Kesnick. During that last timeout, Coach Meyer asking uh, the quarterback to work through his read progression, saying, slow it down, go one, two, three, one, two, three. Slow it down, settle down, you'll be fine. The interesting thing was they were communicating via headsets while standing three yards apart. That's how loud it is down here. Well, we've both been here many times, Chris, and this is as loud as I've ever heard it here by far. There's Hyde again. Similar run to first down. Late flag thrown into the pile. Looked like Hyde might be stopped on first down of the line. He slid ahead for about five. He bounced off the line to scrimmage there and went ahead. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Number 47. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Jordan Hill. Guilty of the penalty that gets Ohio State out of the hole. See right there, he has the face mask. Carlos Hyde has really been running with a lot of power and tenacity, and that's just happens in football. Jordan Hill is active. He's always going to be around the football if it's in the middle. You're reaching out, trying to make a play, and you got grabbed a little mask. That happens. On first and ten from the 30, Miller keeps and gets seven. Taken down by Anthony Zettel. A freshman defensive end, been a good sack man in a bag of roll. He has three sacks this year. I think Ted Roof does have the luxury, like a lot of great defensive schools like Penn State, as they have depth at the defensive line to keep fresh bodies putting that pressure on. Penn State's been winning the field position battle, the third drive in a row. That Ohio State started from the 11-yard line or worse. The 6, the 11, the 3. The line of scrimmage to start their last three drives. Play clock running down. One second as they snap it. Miller elected to keep it. And Gerald Hodges stops him at the 39-yard line. Two-yard gain, third down and one upcoming. And Gerald Hodges is as good as there is in the open field as far as tackling goes. And not easy to bring Braxton down. 
powerfully built. Braxton Miller, and this is the downs that, that Ted Ruth is concerned with. I said it before, I'll say it again. He is most dangerous, not unnecessarily on called runs, but broken down plays where he tucks it and goes, and the secondary's eyes are turned away from him. Ohio State, one out of five on third down. Bill O'Brien and Ted Roof felt like a big reason they lost the first two games. They were terrible on third down on both sides of the ball. High snap to Carlos Hyde. In trouble, and Hodges has him back inside the 30. I don't know why you take the ball out of the hands of Braxton Miller. Now, I'm not saying Braxton Miller would have got that snap, but I'm saying he gives you the best opportunity to get the first down. Well, I don't understand why you do that. I remember when they asked Jim Trestle when he had Terrell Pryor, why don't you run the Wildcat? He said, we think the cat we have back here is pretty wild already. And I would say that applies to Braxton Miller as well. He's, he's not a threat when he runs in motion. Rugby punt for Buchanan. His fifth punt already in the nine possessions between the two teams. That's the ninth punt. Della Valley pulled down almost immediately. The kick coverage was much better tonight for Ohio State. Devin Smith and Rod Smith made the tackle. 52-yard punt. ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Hyundai. Go online and show your loyalty to your school at HyundaiShowYourLoyalty.com. Of course, Halloween just a few days away. I'm very surprised that this video made air tonight. These are members of our production and technical crews, our annual Halloween bowling event last night at Northland Bowl here in State College. The reason that you didn't see any strikes is because there weren't any, as far as <laughs> we can recall. It said bowling back about 50 years, but a fun night had by all. And appreciate the great work of our production and technical crews, led by our producer, Bo Gutterball Garrett <laughs> and director Mike Schwab was in the pirate outfit there. Nice throw, nice catch. McGloin to Allen Robinson. And Penn State's out to the 40 yard line. Travis Howard made the tackle. 19 yard game. Well, based off the play action, which they do do, and you see Travis Howard lose his footing. <laughs> if you're a corner, that cannot happen. It's a good thing for Howard that Allen Robinson didn't run a deep route. But that was a good pass by Matt McGloin, getting him out in space, buying him time, and getting him into some type of rhythm. Deepest penetration for either team. Ohio State made it to the Penn State 39. McGloin staggered a bit as he finished his drop, throwing deep for Robinson. And a flag is thrown. He made the catch at the 23-yard line. Looked like he might have been out of bounds in the middle of that route on the far sideline. Flag thrown. Christian Bryant had the coverage. Pass interference. Defense number two. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a complete pass for a first down. It all starts with recognition by Matt McGloin. What's he see? He sees Robley coming off the corner and understanding that Christian Bryant has a long way to go to cover Robinson. Bryant's coming over a safety position to cover a wide receiver because of his free snap read of the corner blitz by Roby. Robinson was close to the sideline but never did go out. 37-yard gain. Deepest penetration for Penn State. Previous best had been the Buckeye 43. Michael Zordich, ordinarily a fullback, but does see some time as the featured back. He made it down to the 20, a gain of three. Second and seven, nearly midway through the second quarter and still no score. They are in field goal range, but bear in mind that the field goal kicking has been an adventure for Penn State this year. Four out of 11 to Sam Ficken and more often than not, Bill O'Brien's been going for all those fourth downs because he's reluctant to try a field goal. Ohio State blitzes. McGloin got it off incomplete, intended for Brandon Mosby Felder. Christian Bryant in coverage. One of the things that Penn State likes to do is get those tight ends in a bunch formation, and they try to run pick routes to confuse Ohio State's defense. Ohio State is being disciplined playing off of the receivers or that bunch formation then they're jumping men when they come into their area so they're not getting picked because they have space to work Penn State's 0 for 4 on third down could well be four down territory Bill O'Brien says he often treats third down like second down because he knows in his mind he's going for it on fourth down it's 
Soft rush. McGloin nearly intercepted again by Christian Bryant. And the old adage about we see why these guys are defensive backs yeah. and not wide receivers has come into focus here tonight. And just to let the viewers know, we're keeping track with video of all the missed opportunities. That's another missed opportunity by Christian Bryant, who had the ball right in his hands to stop this drive and give your team the football. And for most teams in America, this would be a 37-yard field goal try. But with the struggles of Sam Ficken, of course, last year's kicker, Anthony Farah, who's excellent, transferred out to Texas. And they become a go-for-it on fourth down team. Fourth and seven at the 20. Long count, then movement by the right tackle, Mike Farrell. All starts. Offense, number 78. Five-yard penalty. It remains fourth down. And it's not that Ficken doesn't have a strong enough leg. He just has been inaccurate. He was one for five in their second game of the year at Virginia, which they lost by one, 17 to 16. Just made one of those four that he missed. They would have won the game. They really outplayed Virginia. Been nicked a little bit. Butterworth was kicking field goals in practice on Thursday, but they said Ficken was fine. Quick throw, a lot of room to cover by Mosby Felder, and he doesn't get there. Good tackle by Zach Boren to stop him about three and a half yards short of the markers, and Ohio State will take over on downs. So Zach Boren looks like a guy who's been playing linebacker for four years at Ohio State, not for four weeks. Tomorrow morning, get your NFL Sunday started off on the right foot first at 10 Eastern on ESPN. Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM with Chris Merman and the gang. Providing all the latest news and updates from around the league right up until kickoff. And then at 11 a.m. on ESPN News, join Robert Flores, Matthew Berry, and Tim Hasselbeck. They'll give you all the information you need. Give you an edge in your fantasy league. Fantasy Football Now presented by Papa John's. Very pleasant night here in Happy Valley. Old-fashioned Big Ten defensive struggle is broken out here. And it continues as Braxton Miller is sacked by Mike Hall. Mike Hall is considered the four starter on this defense. You see number 43 coming inside. Marcus Hall, number 79, misses him. The rule on blitzers, you take the inside or the most dangerous guy first. Marcus passed him up. And Hall was able to finish on Braxton Miller. No easy task. Braxton Miller's been under pressure all night long from this excellent Penn State defense. 13th in the country in scoring defense starting the night under 16 per game. Flag thrown, we expect a holding call. And Miller took a pretty good hit from Michael Motti. It is holding. Preliminary indication by the referee, Alex Kemp. Holding. Offense number 79. The penalties declined. Third down. Marcus Hall, the right guard. They started this possession at their 17-yard line, which was the best starting field position of the last four drafts. They've been able to flip the field position a little bit. And conversely, Penn State has not been able to take advantage of when they had Ohio State pinned. Third and 13, they rush five. Time for Miller, down the middle and broken up. And 10 over Devin Smith and Adrian Amos, the sophomore from Baltimore, knocked it away. This ball has to be thrown before Smith comes out of his cut. The ball is late, which allows number four, Amos, to undercut. Protection is good, steps up into the pocket. You're gonna see Devin Smith run a skinny post. The ball's late, he's three steps into his cut, which allows Amos to come in and undercut the cut. Sixth punt for Ben Buchanan. The coverage has been excellent. The longest Penn State punt return tonight's been three yards. Another rugby punt, and it is blocked and recovered for a Penn State touchdown. Mike Hall blocked it. Michael Yance 
Lynch recovered for the Penn State touchdown. State's been the best blocked team in the country this year. They've blocked six kicks, most in the nation. With a taste of his own medicine for Urban Meyer. As Hull makes another big play. Yancic the recovery. Just a special team breakdown of Ohio State continues. And an up and down year with a lot of positives, a lot of big negatives on special teams as well. Sam Ficken added the extra point. Well, two points, Sean. First of all, it's very easy to block a punt if you're on blocked. Right here, Hall is in his three-point stance. And when he comes in, watch where his hands go. His hands don't go above his head. His hand goes right to the foot of the punter. It takes it right off the foot. But when you're on blocked, it's, it's pretty easy to run in there and get it. Some of the fans might be wondering that number five is not Braxton Miller. There is the protector for the punter. It's Cameron Williams, a backup linebacker. A mental breakdown last week, picking up a kickoff return for a touchdown against the Boilermakers. Hall making his presence felt with a sack and a block run. He's from Cannonsburg, PA, the son of a former Nittany Lion. His dad, Tom, played here in the early 70s. One of the great traditions of the Penn State football generations of families, all wearing the blue and white of Penn State. Michael Motti's dad was a terrific player, Rich Motti, for the Nittany Lions, went on the NFL. Sam Ficken down to Rod Smith. Stopped at the 26 yard line. Here's Reese Davis. Sean, time for a Dr. Pepper conference update in the Big Ten. Wisconsin seems to have the inside track and the leaders to make the championship game. Michigan State in the waning minutes. Le'Veon Bell takes a shuffle from Andrew Maxwell. They're in overtime right now. Wisconsin kicked a field goal. Michigan State has the ball. Now, that is a big game, as we mentioned, for these two teams. Wisconsin among the leaders in the leaders division the only one eligible to play in the championship game right now They're behind Ohio State and Penn State now These two teams want to win the division Wisconsin a one-loss team in conference these two both undefeated Play clock running down first and ten Ohio State Miller Wrestled down from behind by Deion Barnes, the outstanding freshman defensive end. Here's Quint Kesnick. Sean, each of the Ohio State coaches handles a specific special team. Punting team is Urban Meyer's specialty. Prior to that punt, he gra grabbed the 11 guys, said, get down the field, get down the field. Tremendous intensity. The focus, obviously, was getting down the field and not blocking the Penn State Nittany Lions. The second punt Buchanan's had blocked this year. After a two-yard gain by Miller, Rod Smith goes ahead for three. Sean Stanley, senior defensive end from Rockville, Maryland, made the tackle. Vital for Ohio State to get a first down just to kind of settle this crowd down a little bit and to get into some type of rhythm. Ohio State has no offensive rhythm, has not had an offensive rhythm the whole first half. The Buckeyes are one out of seven on third down. Under five minutes to go in the half. Five-man rush. Miller in trouble and yanked down. Back at the 27-yard line, James Terry, senior backup defensive lineman. Braxton Miller drops his eyes. You got the matchup you want. You have Corey Brown on Mike Hall, the linebacker. Braxton Miller dropped his eyes when he felt the pressure. And again, the, the Nittany Lions defense are playing with such great intensity that the Buckeye offense is nowhere near matching that intensity. Watch his eyes drop. His eyes drop and it's done. First sack of the season for Terry. And here's Buchanan again. Had the last one blocked for a touchdown just moments ago. They don't come after him this time.
Evan Lewis returns this time. There's a flag down. penalty first down for Ohio State Bill O'Brien angry about it as you might expect a lot of times you'll grab somebody inside to try to create somebody with a free rushing lane Brad Mars backup defensive player guilty of the hold Bill O'Brien want to know what the heck are you calling and he still hasn't gotten a Satisfactory explanation. Boston Irishman, by his own admission, has a bit of a temper. Rod Smith, he's marked down. It's no fumble. He was whistled down at the 49-yard line. It doesn't matter that Malcolm Willis ran it in. Rod Smith has had trouble holding on to the football. And so you see Penn State knows that by watching the film. And Amos comes in and rips it out. And he was down. Excuse me, that was number 10, Malcolm Willis, with the rip out. But see, see those guys understand by their scouting report that Rod Smith does have trouble holding on to the ball. They're trying to rip that sucker out of there at all costs. So it's a 12-yard game for Smith. Sophomore running back from Fort Wayne, Indiana. He remains the back off the right hip of Braxton Miller. He's had a quiet night. Rushed for 17 yards and four out of 11 passing for 45. Going deep here in a double coverage. And incomplete. Flutters to the ground. Comfortably away from Devin Smith. Jacob Fognano, backup safety, had the coverage. Second and 10. Miller's two for his last nine. He was not having a particularly strong game last week through three quarters when he got hurt at Purdue. With nine for 20 passing. And had been held in checking the run game before that 37 yard run, which is his last play of the game. Here he comes. Down to the 42-yard line. Well, of course, this was all set up by the holding penalty on the punt that made Bill O'Brien livid. And here's a look at Brad Barnes, the guilty party. I don't know if I'd call that one either. The guy fell down as Carlos Hyde turns forward for the first down. Wow. <laughs> when you have a guy shooting at your knees and you push him down, that's what you're taught mm -hmm. to do to protect your legs. I think you could see more glaring examples of holding on almost every snap we've watched tonight on both sides. Yep. And he's still explaining it to Bill O'Brien. I don't think Bill O'Brien's going to be happy when he watches the film. I like Matt McGloin's description of Bill O'Brien. He said, why they get along so we're both <laughs> Irish and we have a tendency toward angriness every now and then. That one got Bill O'Brien angry. Miller. Nothing doing. Glenn Carson, primary tackler for the Penn State defense. And time running down now. Two timeouts left for each team with 2.10 to go in the half. Boy, it's never a good thing when you have two poolers, and both poolers don't put a helmet on a helmet, which allows Glenn Carson just to wrap up Braxton Miller. You had Marcus Hall pulling around. Didn't hit anybody. Second and nine, just inside the 40-yard line. Crowd noise has been deafening from the start. These fans have not wavered in the noise-making. Miller finds a big hole. Inside the 10 and chopped down by Adrian Amos at the seven-yard line. 
A great call right here. Rod Smith is going to become a lead blocker. This is a design call. It's almost like a lead isolation play. And we talk about it every single game. You can stop Braxton Miller. You can stop Braxton Miller. Then he is one of those rare players that has the ability to do this and go for 20-plus at any given moment. 32-yard run. The longest play of the night for Ohio State. This is their deepest penetration, their best drive. Hyde powers through the middle, and then he got it walloped. Inside the three, ran in a, those outstanding Butkus semifinals, Mike Maudie and Gerald Hodges. You know, one thing we're seeing tonight is good defensive football and solid hitting. Old-fashioned football. We've been stuck in the Big 12 where they score a lot of points. We're seeing a little knockdown, drag them out, slobber knocker tonight. This instance, sometimes the team on defense calls timeouts, try to get the ball back. No indication of that for Penn State. Hyde stopped short of the goal line. At the one. Two-yard gain. And a huge third down and goal. And a timeout called by Ohio State. Time really not a factor for them. Plenty of time left with one timeout. I'm Reese Davis coming up on the Buick Halftime Report. Another thriller in Camp Randall between Michigan State and Wisconsin. Florida and Georgia have combined for eight turnovers and 20 penalties. It's not decided yet, unfortunately, and certainly a Pyrrhic victory for South Carolina today. See you in a bit. All right, Reese, thank you. Here it's Penn State leading 7-0. Final minute of the first half. Third and goal, Ohio State at the one. Carlos Hyde to the goal line. Touchdown. You know what we say, Sean, low man always wins. That time, Carlos Hyde had leverage, being the lowest guy, and was able to drive into the end zone with power. Just a little zone read. Carlos Hyde one-on-one -on -one with the safety. Fignano, and you see the power because of his leverage of being low, turning those legs. We are reviewing it to see if it was a touchdown, but it looks like he's clearly in there. And he is a touchdown scorer. He leads the Big Ten with 10 points per game. And that is his 10th rushing touchdown of the season. Bear in mind, he mentioned, but missed, merely, as mentioned earlier, nearly three full games due to a knee injury. It's important to remember, too, Carlos running this football. The, the goal line starts at the front of the line. It doesn't have to go into the end zone. It's at the, it just has to cross the front of the yellow line. And there you see it right there, clear and evident. Steve Beckman is the replay official. And I would imagine this wouldn't take him very long to confirm the call on the field. Ohio State 8 and 0. They're not eligible to be ranked in the BCS standings because of their NCAA sanctions or in the coaches poll, but they can be ranked in the AP poll. They're number nine in the country. They were number seven last week, but had Oregon State and Oklahoma jump over them. For further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. And an extra point away from a tie game. Drew Basil, 39 out of 40 in PATs this year. Well play, 75-yard drive for Ohio State. With more than five and a half minutes, and the kick is good. It's a flag down on the play. Penn State was offside. Offside, defense, penalty is declined. Extra point is good. Well, with the way this season has unfolded past the midway point, many believe now that Ohio State and Penn State are the two best teams in the entire Big Ten. They're the leaders of the leaders' division, both undefeated in conference play. 
We've mentioned many times due to the NCAA sanctions imposed on both schools, neither is eligible to play in the Big Ten championship game, but should either win the division, they will be recognized as the division champions. So we asked both coaches during the week, have you talked to your teams about the leaders' division? And they said, yes, important for both teams. Talking about stuff to play for, that's a big thing to play for. Well, absolutely. I think it's the only really tangible trophy that you can get is win that division. But I get the feeling that the kids are playing for so much more. Ohio State's playing for their seniors to send them out winners, and we know what Penn State's playing for. They're playing for something to, to set the tradition and help this whole community and school heal. And they can do that by representing their university and all the fans on the football field. And past the midpoint of the season, a lot of organizations, media outlets awarding midseason honors, and Bill O'Brien won a school of midseason coach of the year honors nationally. And why wouldn't he? Bill Belton returns the squid pig out across the 20. I mean, I can't think of a coach who's had more to deal with in the history of college football than what he stepped into here. Some of it he knew what he was getting into. Some of it, the sanctions came after he accepted the job and were obviously a huge kick in the gut. Four years of scholarship reductions and postseason bans. They'll have to be down to 65 scholarships. I think the killer is Sean, and he has to re-recruit his team every year. It's almost like free agency every year for him. He's got to keep his guys. Which the NCAA, when they handed down the sanction, said players could transfer out immediately somewhere else and not have to sit out. 14 players transferred out that they have until the start of preseason practice next year to have that option. So he's going to have to continue to try to keep folks here. Here's uh, Quint with Urban. Coach, how would you characterize the play of Braxton Miller? Okay, here. How would you characterize the play of Braxton Miller? Yeah, playing really hard. He's got to set his feet a little bit when we're throwing the ball. We've got to protect better. What happened on the block punt? Oh, they brought an extra guy front side. We've got to get that straightened out. What impact is, is this tremendous crowd having? Oh, it's college football, but that's it's part of the game. No impact on your communication? Oh, a little bit. I think we had one penalty, but we're, we're all right. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> You never know those guys had dinner together all the oh, time. Last year. To, you and to quit when he worked with you two last year. He's definitely back on the coaching side now. Seven seven at the half. Reese Davis, Mark May, and Lou Holtz. Always smiling with the Buick halftime report. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. The atmosphere electric inside Beaver Stadium in State College, Pennsylvania tonight. And the sellout crowd watched the defensive struggle in the first half. Neither team made it to 150 yards of offense. Defenses were outstanding. Only one offensive touchdown score. That was by Ohio State after Penn State blocked a punt for a touchdown. Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, the former linebacker. I know you love an old-fashioned defensive struggle. We don't see many of these these days. No, we're not used to seeing it. We're seeing sound defense. We're seeing guys make tackles. But there's been uh, opportunities that both teams have missed in the passing game for touchdowns. Well, we'll see who takes advantage of that because usually if there's one mental error in the first half, there'll be another opportunity for both teams in the second half. And whoever doesn't blow it will win the football game. Drew Basil kicks off for Ohio State. Second half underway. The kickoff muffed by Bill Belton. He has to fall on it at the 11-yard line. Here's Quint Kessnick. Spoke to Bill O'Brien coming out of the tunnel to start uh, this third quarter. Talking about mistakes at the line of scrimmage. The biggest mistake, he said, though, their punt coverage team, the holding penalty, said that was an absolute game-changing play, a momentum-changing play. Uh, look for a little more NASCAR offense and up-tempo, though, he said, as this third quarter begins. Sean? Right it there. was a controversial call. Mm. Mm. They had him stopped with Brad Bars there, backup defensive player. They had Ohio State stopped at their own 30 
on a three and out that kept the drive alive, and they went all the way down the field and scored the only offensive touchdown of the night. Zach Zwinak carries for six on the first play from scrimmage of the second half. Michael Bennett, back up defensive end, made the tackle. Oh, I like what Quinn said about Coach O'Brien, and I believe he's absolutely right in going to the NASCAR offense. Why? Because I think Matt McGloin operates at high efficiency in that up-tempo deal. McGloin, 8 out of 14, passing 116 yards. They put some, and he is sacked back near the five-yard line. Ryan Shazier. Their leading tackler for the season who's had a relatively quiet night came ripping through. He's kind of kind of hiding right here behind big Jonathan Hankins. They're going to do a little split or an X move. And nobody picks him up, and he comes scot free. The big guard, Ethan Ball, has to come down and seal. He does not, which allows Shazier, who's speedy, to get in there and clean up the sack. Third sack of the year for the sophomore from Plantation, Florida. Wearing a different number tonight, ordinarily number 10. We'll explain that to you in a moment. On his own end zone, McGloin intercepted inside the 20. Shazier touchdown. Well, we've had a number of near pick sixes tonight, and finally we have one. And we mentioned the number. It's been unbelievable in this rivalry in the last 11 games now against Penn State. That is the eighth interception return for a touchdown by Ohio State. In every game in which they've returned one for a touchdown against the Lions, the Buckeyes have won, all five of them. We talk about opportunity. Who's going to take advantage of it? Ryan Shazier will show blitz and come out late. We'll show it to you in a second. The extra point up and good by Drew Basil. Here he goes, Sean. Ryan Shazier, who just blitzed, it has to be on the mind of Matt McGloin. He's lined up in a blitz-type look. Then on a snap of the ball, he's going to get out. He does a good job of dropping to the sticks, not jumping anything underneath, getting depth, reading the eyes of the quarterback, breaking on the ball, finishing the play by catching it, and scoring. His first career interception, and he brings it back for a score, 17 yards. Mention the number change. He's worn number 10 all year. He's wearing 48 tonight. That is in honor of a dear friend of his, Gary Curtis, who was the team manager at his high school, Plantation High School in Florida, who passed away recently. 48 was Gary's favorite number, and Ryan wanted to wear it tonight to honor his longtime friend. What a way to honor him. With a defensive score. So we've had a special team score, a defensive score, one offensive touchdown in this game. 14 points in a minute 53 for the Buckeyes. Andrew Basil kicks off for the second time in this half. In a minute and 19 seconds. Drop the kickoff didn't help Penn State on the opening kickoff of the half, and Belton. Exactly named there as he got belted at the 18-yard line. Jamal Marcus leading the special teams coverage. Well, when we talked to Bill O'Brien yesterday about the dramatic improvement of Matt McGloin from last year to this and what he's done well, Bill O'Brien said twice in the span of about 10 minutes, he's protected the ball very well. And both times that he said it, the coach tapped on the table, knocking wood, hoping that that would continue. It hasn't tonight. Strong interception. And fortunate to not have at least another one or two. Zwinak, the, the ball carrier. Barnett made the tackle. Here's Reese. All right, Sean, the turnover fest it was. Georgia and Florida, 17-9. Just over two minutes to go. Gators driving. Jordan Reed striving for the... Oh, there it goes. Sanders Cummings gets the turnover. Florida falls to Georgia. Wow. And now Ohio State, part of a diminishing group of undefeated teams. There were 11 at the start of the day. Try to go right there. Back to the tight end, a big target, Lehman. That time, Zach Bourne is the matchup that you want. Did a good job of jumping that route and breaking that pass up. That's where you wanted to attack Zach, and Zach answered that challenge.
Third down and eight after the drop pass by Gary Gilliam. Movement. Might be a free play for the Nittany Lions. Jump ball. And it's a catch by Jesse James, the true freshman tight end. Looked like Ohio State was offside, and that is likely what the flag is all about, but you should not assume. And that's what it is. An excellent job by Matt McGloin and the players playing through the play. It looked like Ohio State's Offside, pass rush. Defense number 52. Penalties declined. The result of the play is a first down. Stopped in the middle of the play. And Matt McGloin and Jesse James finished. Back to the ground with Zinak on first and 10 from the 40. He had wrestled down by Nathan Williams after a pickup of four. Penn State has not been able to get the ground game going in their three Big Ten wins. Averaging 183 yards rushing, but tonight just 36 yards on the ground. Four yard game, second and six of the 44. Play action fake by McGloin. He got away from Nathan Williams. Throws it away. There's a flag as you see downfield. Thrown near Allen Robinson, the receiver. You saw Bradley Roby, the defensive back, indicating he thought Robinson pushed off, but that is not going to be the call. Holding. Defense number one. Ten-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Good job of Allen Robinson right here getting physical number eight on number one. Bradley Roby kind of stuns him by a little shoulder. And Bradley's forced to grab and tackle him and take him down. Good job by Robinson by initiating that contact. Surprising Bradley Roby. Robinson has really emerged this year. Last year as a true freshman, only three catches. Made a very small role on the Penn State team. Justin Brown, excellent receiver, one of those who transferred out. He went to Oklahoma. They needed somebody to emerge, and Robinson has. Wide open. Brandon Mosby Felder weaving inside the 10 and down inside the five yard line. Bradley Roby saved the game time touchdown. 44 yards for Penn State. The first half they got him with a double move. Now they're going to get him on a double move here on number four, CJ Barnett. Let's take a look at it. Watch the outcut. It's, well, here they come up, yeah, they came up too quickly for the replay. We'll get to it in a moment. Zwinnak sent back from the two yard line. By C.J. Barnett, Brian Shazier, second and goal. That's a NASCAR for you. Hit a big play. They should be ready to snap the ball. But in the first half, Sean, they had one open with Robinson on a double move. That time, they had Mosby Felder on a double move. They beat Ohio State and C.J. Barnett down in scoring position. Good call by Bill O'Brien. Second and goal from the three. A blitz from Ohio State. McGloin's in trouble. Throws it away. Flag thrown. We'd expect a holding call. Well-timed blitz dialed up by Luke Fickle and Everett Withers, the co-defensive coordinators for Ohio State. Holding. Offense number 60. Ten-yard penalty. Second down. Ty Howell, the guard. The backup that sees plenty of playing time. He's going to get in the 19. Orion Johnson's going to come into your pitcher right there. And there's the grab. And I'll tell you, the execution of that blitz was nice because they did not show it. Matt McGloin was surprised, and the offensive line was surprised. So they're late coming on a block, which forced the hold by Howe. Luke Fickle was the interim head coach last year after Jim Tressel departed. Meyer retained him as the defensive coordinator. Second and goal from the 13, and the Buckeyes not fooled by the draw. Zwinak stuffed by Michael Bennett. And it's, a, it's a tough sledding inside there when you're running into guys like Bennett and Big John Hankins eating up blockers, which leads others along that front seven one-on-one -on -one to win their individual battles. Big John Hankins, an outstanding player, future NFL player. Third and goal. Be interesting to see if they don't advance the ball from here. Will they try about a 30-yard field goal with Sam Ficken? Got Kyle Carter here at tight end, Sean. I like him down here in the red zone. 
He releases right off the line. They dump it in the flat, and Zwinnick lost the ball. He's ruled down by his elbow, making contact with a four-yard gain. Bradley Roby there, and it will be a field goal try. Well, he was looking for Carter, too, in that back corner of the end zone. I'm surprised he didn't let it go because he had the size matchup against Christian Bryant, who he's working one-on-one -on -one with. Here's Sam Fickett, sophomore from Valparaiso. Had a rough year. The crowd's out here early cheering him on in the warm-ups. Bill O'Brien says he's a great kid. Dean's list student working hard to be a better kicker. And he's now made three of his last four. So after a horrible start to the season, he's starting to get the hang of it. 27-yard field goal and a four-point Ohio State lead in the third quarter. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Back in State College, Pennsylvania. Lovely college town in central PA. We're in Center County, which just about tells you the location. Within Pennsylvania, here's Sam Ficken to kick off after his field goal has Penn State within four. Tom McDonough, Chris Gilman, and Quint Kessnick. The sellout crowd at Beaver Stadium. Ficken sends it down to the two to Rod Smith. Flag down. He's wrestled down near the 20 yard line by Curtis Dukes. Illegal block here against Ohio State. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team number 12. Half the distance to the goal line. Ohio State keeps the ball first out. There's the play that set it up. Mosby Felder on a double move working on C.J. Barnett. They got him in the first half with a double move. And here it is. C.J. Barnett looks back at the quarterback, and then he loses sight of the receiver. Now watch this. Bradley Roby with great hustle comes in and saves the touchdown, which forced Penn State to kick the field goal. 42-yard play. Set up the field goal. Fourth time tonight that... The Buckeyes have started at their own 11 or worse. Carlos Hyde denied immediately by Sean Stanley. No gain. Well, the first six drives tonight for Ohio State resulted in punts. One of them was blocked for a Penn State touchdown. In the last drive of the first half, they took advantage of holding call while they were punting. Call against Penn State. Marched down the field 75 yards and scored. Hyde out to the 12-yard line. Jordan Hill and Daquan Jones made the tackle for Ted Roof. Uh, Penn State's telling me how they're stopping the run or slowing it down. They're playing zone blitz every single time. Run or pass, they're bringing five, and one of the linebackers is always coming. Will O'Brien put together an excellent staff here, and Ted Roof is a huge part of it. Defensive coordinator on Auburn's National championship team two years ago. Here's a blitz. And Hall couldn't get Miller down. Now he throws a wall burn that's intercepted. Adrian Amos picked it off. His first of the year. Well, Miller created a second chance with his escape ability, but did not take advantage of the second opportunity. We just talked about the zone blitz, bringing linebackers. Take a look. Hall has a chance to sit here and make a tackle as Carlos Hyde misses the block. Now, Braxton Miller can have a choice. Either run it out of bounds, or he had Devin Smith setting it eight yards for the first down. And again, his eyes did not pick up the smart play. Tries to make the huge play, results interception. Amos. Yes, starting field position for the Nittany Lions. The Ohio State 44. Zwinak ahead for a yard or two. Ryan Shazier and Zach Boren made the tackle. Boren had five stops in the first half. The young man who just joined us was a fullback a couple of weeks ago. But due to injuries of the linebacker position, he moved over. He does still get a briefing every week on the offensive game plan and is available in a situation if need be to go in and play some offense not very likely blitz picked up and then down goes McGloin. nathan williams the defensive end got him 
After the blitzer, C.J. Barnett was stopped and lost his helmet from his safety spot. Boy, I, I mean, when you pick up a blitz, this is the way you want to pick up the blitz is when that who comes up and steps in and, and pops him pretty good. But Nathan Williams, who can rush from the outside, when you put speed on the inside, that's a troubled matchup for an offensive guard and Nathan Williams with his quickness. You know, one of the things I couldn't believe coming in, Chris, Ohio State, 53rd in the country in sacks and 109th in tackles for a loss with a terrific group of defensive linemen, Nathan Williams, Hankins, as you said, a future NFL player, Simon, one of the best defensive linemen in the Big Ten. You guys are going to get a shot, Sean. McGloin on third and very long, 17, dumps it off short to Zwinak. And an excellent defense, great sequence on defense for the Buckeyes. Williams and Christian Bryant combined on the tackle. And Penn State cannot take advantage of its best field position of the night. Bill O'Brien sends Alex Butterworth out to punt. What a job Luke Fickle and Everett Withers at defensive staff and the players after the performance last week against Purdue, which was okay, but defensively, Ohio State's been struggling all year. And certainly came to play tonight. Maybe a fake, it is. Butterworth throws, incomplete. Well defended by Adam Griffin. A gutsy call, but discipline by Adam Griffin, who never quits on the play, and he sees the hands go up of Derek Day, and he plays the hands without getting any interference. He threw it to the wrong guy. Mike Hull looked like it was wide yeah. open. And instead, <laughs> he tried to throw it to Derek Day, who had Griffin right next to him. The two guys in the same spot. You're right, Mike Hall did sneak out from the defensive end position, but you're not going to ask the punter to make the proper progressions in his route reading. Braxton Miller keeps. <laughs> Two-yard gain. Michael Motti and Glenn Carson made the tackle. Here's another look at it. Hall right there. Oh boy. Wide open. And he did throw it to the wrong guy. And a great recovery by Adam Griffin, a backup corner. And a good job of not getting there early and playing the hands of the intended receiver. How many times do your coaches talk about our punter's decision making when he throws <laughs> the ball it needs to be better? Get your progressions right, will you? Second and eight, six minutes to go, third quarter, bull rush by Barnes, didn't get there. Spencer the catch, and Evans spins ahead to the Penn State 42-yard line, a 13-yard gain. Malcolm Willis made the stop for Penn State. Where Penn State needs to stop, Ohio State's defense came up with a huge stop in field position. Can Penn State rise to the challenge, and how they've been able to get pressure is bring five, and those linebackers have been active as far as pressure comes in passes against the Buckeyes. Only 165 yards of offense for Ohio State, but they lead by four, and they're in Penn State territory. Miller. Going to take off and run. Might have been across the line as he threw incomplete. Intended for Corey Brown. No flags on the play. He was very close to that line of scrimmage. This is again the opportunity where Braxton Miller has a chance to get positive yards with his feet and cutting it awful close to that line of scrimmage. You can see that black line. Does a good job of buying time to throw the ball, but go ahead and get five. Tough to tell there. Second and ten. Miller, good decision to keep it. First down. And he's down inside the 30. No mark him at the 27-yard line. 14-yard game. Sean, you're right. Good decision and a better decision to slide at the end of that play as they go hurry up. And Penn State was not lined up on defense. Miller broke a tackle and got down to the 22-yard line. Ted Roos defense on its heels. If I'm playing the option, I make sure that I have the quarterback taken. If his name is Braxton Miller, I'm going to make sure I'm going to let the pitch go and make sure I get a shot on number five. 
Not been a big statistical night for the Heisman candidate. Miller's thrown for just 58 yards. He's up to 81 yards rushing. On second and four. Miller throws toward the end zone. Broken up. Outstanding play by Stephen Obing Ajapong. It was intended for Jeff Hireman, a tight end. And again, I'm going to keep saying it. He has room to run and to get positive yards, but he's holding on to that football and he's waiting to make the throw when he can get positive yards with his feet. Well, it didn't look like Hireman was breaking free toward the corner of the end zone. Yeah. Third down and 11. I trust his feet more than I trust his arm if you're a Buckeye fan. Third and four. They're three out of 11 on third down. Miller zings one. Great throw. And Evan Spencer has a first down for the Buckeyes. At the nine-yard line. Adrian Amos, the tackle, and they're going to come up very quickly again. Yeah, if you can help yourself by alignment, knowing that he's outside the numbers, chances are he's running a slant route just like he did. Ball on target. And Miller showing arm strength there. Hyde trying to bounce outside. It's a tired-looking defense. And Amos finally able to bang him across the boundary inside the three. Second and goal. Six-yard run for Hyde. And they do. They got him reeling. You see all the Penn State defenders lagging around. They're getting down in their stance late. And they can't substitute against this quick pace. Hyde to the goal line. Couldn't extend the ball across the plane. Third and goal from inside the one. That line right up and run to Hyde again. Again, quickly over the ball. Braxton Miller in the Buckeyes offense. Hyde got level, but Miller kept it. Miller dances. Touchdown. What a play. Braxton Miller. First of all, it starts with his vision and decision making to pull this ball out after Stanley comes in, and not too many guys in the country will do that out to you. Against a good player in Hodges, then has the ability to go up and over and get the ball across the end line. Mental and physical, outstanding by Braxton Miller. And starting to take over the game. After a first half below his standards, Drew Basil adds the extra point. And this gigantic crowd has been quieted. Ted Roof not happy with his defense or the officials at the moment. Three and a half to go, third quarter. ESPN College Football Primetime, brought to you by Fidelity Investments. Fidelity Investments, supporting higher education across the country, is honored to present the National Football Foundation's National Scholar Athlete Awards. Well, as we went to break, you saw Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, giving the holding signal to the officials, and we think this is probably what he was angry about, Reed Fragel, the right tackle on the touchdown play. See, first of all, he's okay right there, but right when he gets turned, he does not let him go, then he jumps on his back. And you can understand why Ted Roof would be angry at that call, but I can't get over the move that Braxton Miller threw. Not too many guys can do that. I think it'll be very iffy holding call on the punt player. And we've seen examples like we just saw all night long on both sides, in fairness, where it looks like they've let all kinds of holding go along the offensive line. Uncalled. I agree. Bill Belton returned the kickoff. Penn State will have the football when we come back. We're just about 10 minutes away from the start of the big matchup on ABC Saturday Night Football. Number five Notre Dame in Norman, Oklahoma to take on the eighth ranked Sooners. Presented by Windows 8. 8 o'clock Eastern, top of the hour, 5 Pacific on ABC. First trip to Norman for the Irish since 1966. A year that was good in Notre Dame. They won the national championship that season. Two score game now. Ohio State with an 11 point lead. Playing terrific defense tonight. McGloin's pass batted down by Michael Bennett, ordinarily a backup defensive end. He's seen a lot of time here in the second half. 
And he sniffed out that quick screen. Well, that's what Purdue hurt Ohio State with last week, and that's not a staple in Penn State's offense. They did work it on it Thursday. It looks like Ohio State was prepared for that play and knew that was coming. So they hope they can get the lead, take the crowd out of the game, and they have. It's as quiet as it's been all night. McGloin lobs it up. Incomplete. Looking for Trevor Williams. And Bradley Roby had the coverage. You know, one of the reasons why Matt McGloin is kind of struggling tonight a little bit, he's been on the move a lot. It's just the pressure of Ohio State. That time they got pressure and forced McGloin out of the pocket by only bringing three. And Sean, anytime you can only bring three, you got eight good athletes back there covering. There's not going to be a lot of people open. Going through for at least 200 in each of the last five games. All the wins. He's thrown for 190 tonight. Third and 10. Had plenty of time that time. Throwing deep in a single coverage. And it's incomplete. Crowd wanted a flag. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver, with Bradley Roby in coverage. Coverage by number one, Bradley Roby. Allen Robinson is the deep threat. This time, protection's good. Steps up into the pocket. You see here. A good coverage by Bradley Roby. Not panicking, trusting his technique, and looking and leaning at the proper time into the receiver. Three and out by the Buckeye defense. They pressured Alex Butterworth. Short pump, but a great bounce. This field's got away from it and will roll all the way down to the 15-yard line. Here's Reese Davis after a 58-yard punt. All right, Sean, this is how it ended in the desert. Funny thing happened on the way to that USC-Oregon showdown next week. 39-36, Arizona had the lead. Matt Barkley's last chance on a day that Marquise Lee had over 300 yards receiving. He's number nine and couldn't quite pull it in. And Arizona, what a win for Rich Rodriguez, 39-36. What a year it's been for Rich Rodriguez. They go to five and three with that win, and they've had a couple of heartbreaking losses. It could have been that much better a debut season in the desert. On first and ten, Hyde with a flag thrown. Well, perhaps Ted Roof's working with the officials on the Ohio State touchdown. The end of their last possession paid off because he's going to get a holding Personal call. Personal foul. Face mask. No, Defense not. number 90. Perhaps a good one. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Perhaps you shouldn't guess what the penalty's going to be. Sean <laughs> Stanley called for it. It's interesting that uh, Ohio State comes into this game the most penalized team within the Big Ten. So far tonight, they only have three for 29 yards, while Penn State has racked up six for 60. Penn State have been averaging fewer than five penalties per game, second least penalized team in the Big Ten coming in. Two and a half minutes to go third quarter. Miller keeps. Great fake. And to the delight of Buckeye fans everywhere, runs out of bounds. And doesn't take a lick. An 11-yard gain and a first down. Well, the biggest improvement of Braxton Miller is the read. Right there, he sees the defensive end. That's Zettel. Jump inside. He knows to pull it right there. From the beginning of the year to this point of the year, that's his biggest improvement is the zone read running play. He's starting to get into a comfortable rhythm. Threw an incomplete pass on the run there in the direction of Nick Vanette. The tight end. Gets in trouble since his feet. Urban Meyer talked about it to Ron Quick Kesnick going into halftime. He's having trouble setting his feet, and when you don't set your feet, you're inaccurate with the football. Urban Meyer, Braxton Miller, and the Buckeyes trying to get to 9 and 0. Aiden knows their best start since 07 when they started the year 10 and 0. They want to go into the national championship that game and off to LSU. Room for Rod Smith inside the 30 and chopped down by Malcolm Willis. Ohio State started to take over the game here in the third quarter. 28-yard run for Smith. No man land is no place to be. That's where Deion Barnes gets caught. He's trying to cover both, does not. And here you go, the hurry up after a successful play. You got to pick one. Deion Barnes a little confused.
Miller handed it off. Rod Smith tripped up by Glenn Carson at the 20 yard line, but that's five more. They're getting yardage in chunks. Here's the lineup starting at the top of the hour. The two games Notre Dame and Oklahoma, Michigan and Nebraska at 8 30, number one Alabama and undefeated Mississippi State. Miller, another great fake. And another first down to the six yard line where Malcolm Willis took him down. Nick Van Nett does a great job of blocking and might have got away with the hold as you're going to see Jersey on Hodges being pulled. They're letting him play inside there. First and goal and Hyde is down to the one yard line with that previous rush. Braxton Miller is over 100 yards rushing for the game. It's his sixth 100 yard game of the year in nine games. Second and goal. Hyde did not get the handoff. Miller scores again. Touchdown, Ohio State. Second rushing touchdown of the night for Braxton Miller. Give an assist to the offensive line who took control of that series and the ability for Braxton Miller, an improvement that he's made from the beginning of the year to this game on a zone read option because he's clicking on all cylinders right now. He's seeing everything. Drew Basil for the point after. Drew Basil's extra point is good. 40 seconds left in the 28 to 10. They've outscored. Ohio State has outscored Penn State 21 to 3 in this quarter. Miller and Myers and Braxton Miller is our best player. Clearly he is. Let's find out how he's found success. Brought to you by Expedia. Well, again, it's just his ability to run the football, but his big, biggest success has been that knowing when to hand the ball off to the running back, knowing when to keep it. He's making all the decisions, and when he's making decisions, and he's that dangerous, Sean, which very few people can make that move he just made in this, knowing when he gets in the goal line, where it is, and have the power to put the ball over the line. Up to 108 yards rushing. His average is just under 120. He scored those two touchdowns in less than three minutes. I would have said at the beginning of this quarter, his Heisman chances were taking a little bit of a blow tonight. At the end of the quarter, might be enhancing <laughs> he's, his Heisman hopes. He's, he's uh, definitely been a second half player. I think he has been watching him throughout the year. Drew Basil kicks off. Bill Belton. Boy, the kick coverage has been so much better for Ohio State tonight. Bradley Roby, a starting corner down there to stop him shy of the 25-yard line. They'll mark it at the 20. Boy, well, we mentioned the Heisman race. Joe Test Tour every week polls all of us at ESPN who have a Heisman ballot. And Colin Klein, the leader, starting of the day, and he had another big day. I mean, I think if they had the balloting today, he'd be the runaway choice. But they don't have it today. Yeah, absolutely. Another guy of interest right there is A.J. McCarron. He's having an outstanding year leading the Crimson Tide offense. As you saw, Braxton Miller very much in the mix. Screen to Belton. They finally get one to work. And it's a first down to the 31-yard line, an 11-yard gain. Jonathan Hankins made the tackle. But in the final minute of this third quarter and down by 18, they're going to have to get back to that NASCAR pace just about full time. Now that's a good call by Bill O'Brien. You know that Ohio State's been getting pressure. So one way to slow pressure of a blitzing defense is to hit him with screens. Now a deep hand off to Belton. <laughs> to the 36 yard line five yard gain on the final play of the third quarter which was dominated by Ohio State. That guy defense has helped Penn State to just 231 yards through three quarters. Undefeated Buckeyes leading 28 to 10 15 minutes to play here in State College Pennsylvania. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. The break between quarters, Bill O'Brien. Fiery Boston Irishman getting after his Nittany Lions. 
They were dominated in the third quarter. It's tied at seven at the half. It's 28-10 Ohio State. As we go to the fourth quarter, Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, Quint Kessenick, Matt McGloin on second and five for the Nittany Lions. His receiver fell down, and he's out of bounds. Kyle Carter was open, slipped while making the catch, and was across the boundary. You know what they say, timing is everything. This ball is so late that Carter loses his footing, but he is out of bounds when he has control. But Matt McGloin, because of the pressure, I don't know why he's throwing the ball so late tonight on film. He did not. The timing is all disrupted. Well, a little higher quality of defense, perhaps. Yes. It has rattled him, although the Ohio State defense for much of the year was porous. Started the night only 63rd in the country in total defense, 50th in scoring defense. McGloin dumps it off short and short of the first down. Bill Belton, to Bill Belton. made the catch. There is a flag down on the play. Yeah, they're going to get Shazier for a late hit. Passer. Defense number 48, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, that's a huge penalty, and Penn State was likely going to have to go for it on fourth down from inside their own 40. Now they don't. Again, it's a nice little stunt, allowing Shazier to come free, and Ryan probably has to try to pull up on that one. He certainly can understand the call. I'm surprised to hear you say that. Is what? It? it is what it is. American linebacker, Bill Belton, to the Ohio State 40 yard line. Christian Bryant made the tackle, a gain of six for the sophomore from Sicklerville, New Jersey, Belton. You know, the rules have changed so much, Sean, that we're at the point now where the kids are starting to understand and it's being coached that you have to be able to pull up. If in doubt. Yeah, pull up. You pull have up. to. In this day and age, protecting the players from concussions. If any doubt, don't do it. McGloin after a good fake. Wild pitch. Blowing away for Brandon Mosby Felder. Third down and four. It's just, it's just been all night. That's what we've seen. And, and again, on film and watching them in practice, they were like a machine. Matt McGloin's throwing the ball before these guys are out of their cuts. Tonight, just the timing has been disrupted. And I don't know if it's the pressure, but it's not what it used to be or should be for Ohio State or for Penn State to get back in this football game. One for 11 on third down are the Nittany Lions. Must convert situation here, down by 18 in the fourth. And they do convert as Kyle Carter, the freshman, made the catch. He's the only freshman on the midseason watch list for the John Mackey Award as the best tight end in the country. There are 26 tight ends nationally on that list. He was very excited when Bill O'Brien got the job, and he knew the emphasis was going to be much more on tight end play here. Delton to the 29-yard line, a gain of three. Zach Boren made the stop. It's time to start the NASCAR pace. Yep. they got to pretend like they're at the, in the chase. <laughs> Jimmy Coming Johnson. Brad Keselowski. Yes. <laughs> Jimmy's got to catch him sometime. Seeing the crowd shots, and you can hear the difference. Deafening noise through most of the first half. It's very quiet here now. And a touchdown here would... Certainly get the crowd back into the game. A blitz. McGloin up his back foot. Incomplete. Over the head of Jesse James. Well, that's the matchup you want. C.J. Barnett on Jesse James. And young Jesse James is standing at 6'7". But the problem is Matt McGloin, as you said, throwing off his back foot. Yeah, when he could have stepped into that throw. No. I mean, tonight he's done a lot of things that remind me of the Matt McGloin of last year. Just inconsistent, absolutely. So number 54, John Simon down, and I'm going to tell you, for him to go down and take a knee, that must have been a heck of a shot he took, because he doesn't go down for anybody. He's like the raging bull. <laughs> he never got me down, Ray. From Youngstown, Ohio, he was a teammate of Cardinal Mooney of Michael Zordich, the fullback for Penn State. And there are two peas in a pod there. Usually if you're from Youngstown, you're yeah. tough. Yes, you are. Third down and seven. A guy named Mike Billy is one of the toughest guys I knew from Youngstown. And on both sides of the line. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. 
Second time tonight that's happened to Mike Farrell, the senior from Pittsburgh. Overall, the third false start against the Penn State offense. That's been the problem. Costly penalties for Penn State, obviously, but the time at the, where the penalty occurs has been really been the issue for the Nittany Lions. Bill O'Brien calls the plays. He was, of course, the offensive coordinator in New England before he came to Penn State. And he's going to burn a timeout here. Yeah, that could be big. Time not on his side with 13 minutes to go and down by 18 points. With the time of 28 10, undefeated Ohio State leads. Two minutes into the fourth. 28 10, Ohio State leads Penn State. Two minutes into the fourth quarter. Sean McDonough with. Chris Spielman and Quick Kessenick, this big crowd glum. 107,818, the attendance tonight, a sellout. First of the Bill O'Brien era. Big play here, third down and 12 for the Nittany Lions of the Buckeye 34. See if they give Matt McGloin a pocket to throw in as opposed to throwing off his back foot and running around. Five man rush, dumps it off to Belton. And he's down short of the first down by a yard. Have to think they'll go for it here. Field goal only gets them to 15 points, and they don't kick field goals because of the problems they've had. Shazier made a big tackle. They line up quickly. Ohio State wasn't lined up, and they might have still stopped them. Where will they spot the ball? Looks like they're going to give it a first down mark well beyond the line. Bill Belton, the ball carrier, picked it up by a little bit less than a yard. Well executed by Penn State to get lined up in a hurry and knowing what they were going to do makes me think two snaps or two calls on the line were called previous. McGloin, all kinds of time to throw. Lost one, and it is incomplete. Kyle Carter was not able to hang on. Bradley Roby had coverage. Well, here's the missed opportunity again, Sean. We saw it. This is the third time they get Ohio State on a double move. He's got to be able to bring that in there, although Roby does a good job of not quitting and raking the hands. But Carter has big, strong hands where he could have grabbed that one, pulled that in, and kept it away from Roby. But a great play by Roby of not quitting and swatting the hands of the intended receiver. 14th play of this Penn State drive. Haven't scored an offensive touchdown tonight. Quick flip to the side to Robinson and great pursuit by Ohio State. Shazier ran him down, two yard gain. Here's another third down. Well, that's the only thing that tells me is that Ohio State got burned by the screen last week and you can tell there was an emphasis on practice this week because the corner forced everything back inside to the pursuit. And one thing Ohio State's defense can do, it can run. Two games ago, Ohio State gave up 49 points at Indiana in a 52-49 win. Gave up 38 against Nebraska in the game before that, a 63-38 win. Timeout. Ohio State, their first. And that's been a tremendous defensive effort tonight by the Buckeyes. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. Feel the Hamptonality. When the day started, there were 11 undefeated teams in college football. Now there are eight. Ohio State's one of them. And leading this one 28 to 10. Penn State in the red zone. Third down at eight. The Ohio State 19. Matt McGloin has a receiver wide. And batted away. Great play by Bradley Roby. Robinson was there waiting for it. And the blob throw gave the defender an opportunity to get back and punch it away. Well, again, it's a double move, which they've been susceptible to. But the problem is the ball is late. It's been late all night. And when it's late, when you have a guy like Bradley Roby, who does have good closing speed, he's going to end up breaking it up. But that's been the problem. The missed opportunity is the ball is not being delivered on time. It's almost like he's confused a little bit, yeah, Sean. Throws off his back foot. Yeah. Not stepping into them. And one to put some air into that one, but with enough zips so that the defender can't close. Fourth down at eight. 
Must convert from McGloin in Penn State. He's in a world of trouble. Throws it up down the middle. Caught by Carter. So a couple of fourth down conversions on this drive. Kyle Carter was open right between the hash marks. First and goal at the five. Lock on receivers when a quarterback scrambles. Zach Bourne loses Kyle Carter. Instead of locking on, playing man-to-man, -man, once that quarterback defends, that's a rule. And Matt McGloin finds him down the seam. Mark at the four, 15-yard gain. 11 minutes to go. Bill Belton. Ahead for two yards. Time. Ticks off. It's been a time-consuming drive for Bill O'Brien and the Nittany Lions. 17th play of the drive. Belton again. Wow. Little gain, less than a yard, and the clock keeps going. That time right there, Zach Bourne did a good job of coming from his backside linebacker position, anticipating where the run was going to go via his scouting report, I imagine, because of the two tight ends stacked to one side, knowing that's a strong side running side. 48 yards rushing for Penn State, but they keep trying to pound it in here. Belton alone back. Play action fake to him. McGloin running out of time. Nathan Williams chases him. Touchdown. Well, if you stay alive long enough, somebody's going to be open, and Matt Lehman was. You're open once, you're open twice, you're open three times. I'll find you on the third time, and a great job of protection. For the Penn State defensive line, you see Lehman dancing back there in the end zone, but staying alive, staying alive, and it helps that Shazier loses his footing. As Penn State will line up and go for two. Yeah, it's interesting, they'll get within 10 if they can make it, but if you kick it, and it's an 11-point game, you could tie the game with two scores, a field goal, and an eight-point touchdown. Belton, no chance. John Simon blew it up. Two points for Penn State. Simon says no. 9.49 to go. And a 12-point lead for the Buckeyes. ESPN College Football is available anytime, anywhere on your computer or mobile device via watchespn.com and the Watch ESPN app. I'm all over it. Love. You are all over it. Huh? I spent 14 hours in a Lubbock airport and enjoyed every minute of it because I had to watch ESPN app, so I didn't miss a thing. Penn State gets a touchdown, did not get the two, but it took them a long time. Five minutes and 51 seconds. We're under 10 minutes to go. And Ohio State up by 12. See Mike Motti over there dancing on the Penn State sidelines. And at the 30-yard line, seeing if they come out with some energy because Ohio State basically wore them down the last drive. Well, they had plenty of time to rest on that 18-play, 80-yard drive by the Nittany Lions. Kicking a tumbling kick down to the goal line to Rod Smith. And he's taken down to the 25. Here's Reese Davis in the studio with an update. Sean, we keep your finger on the prime time pulse. They're underway on ABC, Notre Dame and Oklahoma. Sooners were marching down the field, had an errant shotgun snap that thwarted their first drive. Michigan and Nebraska playing on ESPN2. Bernard Robinson and company, he's had some success. He's moved it into Nebraska territory, but nobody has scored yet. That game's on ESPN2. The penalty against Ohio State for a hold during the run back. So the Buckeyes will start this possession right in front of the student section at their own eight-yard line. Braxton Miller's taken over the game in the second half. Primarily with his feet. Carlos Hyde stuck. Michael Motti drove him back. 
have to believe that there was an adjustment made by Ted Roof on the sidelines versus his own read. Right there, Stanley did a good job of not committing and taking the dive away. Return. Good job of handling a high snap. Miller slithers out to the 15 yard line. And here comes a huge third down and three for Ohio State. They're five out of 13 on third downs tonight. Almost a disaster if you're a Buckeye fan. That ball was high. And remember, Corey Lindsley did sail one when Carlos Hyde took a snap from the shotgun. So that's the second high snap of the night. Big play. Penn State just scored, trying to keep momentum with a three and out. Miller keeps. Miller has the first down. Out to the 22. They got hands on him near the line of scrimmage, but not enough to stop him. Gerald Hodges and Jordan Hill finally did make the tackle on the Buckeye quarterback. Well, I go back to our conversation with Urban Meyer and Tommy Herman, the offensive coordinator. No matter how many shots Braxton Miller takes, he's going to run the ball as much as necessary as it needs to win. And right there in the crucial down, obviously, you want the ball in number five's hands. This is exactly what they said. He's going to handle as much <laughs> as we need. The priority is to win the game. And if he has to take more hits, he has to take it. Hyde. Surges out to the 26-yard line, midpoint of the fourth quarter now. John Stanley made the tackle from behind for Penn State. That's, that's a credit to that offensive line for the Buckeyes. Ed Warner doing a good job, the offensive line coach. And Sean, last week, they pretty much got manhandled up front by Purdue's front seven. They came out angry tonight and making a statement. Tom Herman on the right, the offensive coordinator. He was at Iowa State last year. Miller. About a yard. Mike Hall made the tackle under seven minutes to go. And can the Buckeyes convert on third down again and keep that clock running? Well, they have man-to-man -man coverage outside. And so it'll be a little bit of a gamble to throw the football. Braxton Miller, 6 for 18 for 71 yards. But if you have something that's a clear man-beater, now's the time to run it in a crucial third down and Miller and let that clock continue to bleed for quite a bit snapped it at eight steps into a throw and it's caught right down the middle they're not going to get stone burner touchdown 72 yards like we said, Sean, if you got a man beater, go ahead and run it. They had one. Yes, they did. Seventy-two yards matching the longest pass of Braxton Miller's career. The extra point is good by Drew Basil. Ohio State just took a huge step toward 9 and 0. Oh. They've scored a touchdown now on four of the last five drives. Recognizing blitz, seeing man-to-man -man coverage. First of all, it starts up front with the protection, then you have Fignano matched up on Stoneburner. When you get protection in time, it's very difficult to cover that much in space. It's just a skinny post. Throws over the top at Jake Stoneburner. The big six foot five, 250 pound split end slash tight end knows how to finish. By far the longest reception of his career. The previous long was 40. Well, before that, Braxton Miller had 71 yards passing for the night. He doubled that total with one throw to Stoneburner. The senior from Dublin, Ohio, right there outside Columbus. 
I like the call, too. I mean, you can run it, maybe get it, but they knew it was coming. Trust your quarterback, trust your receivers to win their one on one battles. A big payoff with six plus the extra point. Yards passing, 124 rushing. Braxton Miller. And particularly in the second half, one big play after another when his team needed it. Basil's kickoff down to Bill Belton at the two. Again, the kickoff coverage, excellent for Ohio State. Adam Griffin made the tackle. Let's take a look at the latest BCS standing. They'll change tomorrow. Brought to you by Vizio, of course, Alabama. About 15 minutes away from kicking off at home against Mississippi State. Mississippi State's undefeated, but they've played a pretty soft schedule. It's going to get a lot less soft than a yeah. hurry. <laughs> well, they're going to get tested tonight, as you know. And uh, again, A.J. McCarron at Alabama defense. Tyler Russell from Mississippi State's had a nice year. You have to think next week. Alabama wins. They obviously Stevie number one. K State probably go to number two after a solid win against a good Texas Tech team. Oregon probably three. Oregon well, get many style points for beating Colorado. Another nice break up by Bradley Roby, who came into tonight leading the Big Ten in passes defended. He's going to add to that lead with this performance tonight. Yeah, he's done a nice job and susceptible to the double move. If I'm Kerry Combs, the defensive back coach, I tell me, Bradley. Just be, be play safe now. We don't need to give anything over the top. McGloin throws. High throw caught by Brandon Mosby Felder. Short of the first down marker. They'll mark him at the 22 yard line. Five yard game, third and five. And this is kind of being Kyle Carter territory, number 87, lined up inside in the slot. McGloin. Throws to Carter for the first down to the 30. Five and a half minutes to go. Orion Johnson, the safety, made the tackle. We've talked a lot about what a great job Bill O'Brien has done. He's done a tremendous job. We spoke with Mike Motti at practice on Thursday afternoon. He said, I'm not sure there is another person or coach who could have come into this situation and done what he's done on and off the field. When Bill O'Brien got the job, a lot of the old guard Penn State folks weren't happy about it, had no history here, was kind of an unknown assistant, best known for a shouting match on the sideline with Tom Brady. Yeah. <laughs> but from day one, he's done everything right. He won over the fan base. He won over the team that he inherited. He's a good person. Very sincere guy. And as honest as they come, he's a hard guy not to like and root for. He stepped into, obviously, a incredibly difficult situation here and has done everything well on the other side urban meyer didn't exactly step into a great situation either and he's going to be nine and oh when this one's over yeah, i think both guys have done an outstanding job and, and the one thing just to go back to coach o'brien is that the initial impression i got was genuine confidence mm -hmm. in, in his ability and confident to handle the situation that was presented before him McGloin throws on the run back across his body to Allen Robinson. They convert on third down. Yeah, confidence, but not in any way oh, cockiness oh. or arrogance. Yeah. And for a guy who has never been a head coach, we watched him at practice the other day. Okay. So impressive. His ability to yell and scream when he needed to get after somebody, to encourage them when they were deserving of praise. And I think he's going to continue to keep these players here, even though they still have a chance to transfer out without having to sit out until the start of preseason practice next year, because these players are buying in to what he's selling, and he's backing it up with his ability. Bill Belton made the catch. And you talk about it, and I want to go back to, you know, there's a lot of ego in, in football. We know that. We're around it every week. Confidence is to know you're good. Cocky is when you think you're good. He, you just know he's good being around him. He doesn't have to tell anybody as Kyle Carter catches the seam now. And gets into Ohio State territory, the 35. <laughs> the 
although Brian talked to us yesterday about the benefit of his experience in New England. He'd been the college assistant for 14 years. He said, I went to New England in 2007, and I realized I didn't know anything. <laughs> and and he wasn't kidding. No, there's a big difference. And to be able to put that system as you go off sides again, but, but to put New England system. False start, offense number 76, five-yard penalty, still first down. Here at Penn State in such a short time and to be as efficient as they've been so far this year, it's not only a credit to his coach O'Brien, but his coaching staff mm -hmm. and the players. And the one thing this team does have, even though they had an exodus of talented players, Justin Brown, Silas Red, they have great leaders on this team that never quit and, and absorbed what he was saying. What Bill O'Brien said, he said, people are giving me credit, but this could not have happened without the character of the senior class. <laughs> We all remember Mike Motti stepping forward when they were all given a chance to leave. He represented me and Michael Zordich, the group that said we are committed to Penn State. Just earlier this week, they call them the Super Six, six second-year players, including Bill Belton, who all said they're staying next year no matter what. That includes Allen Robinson, Adrian Amos, Kyle Carter. That's a lot of talent. They're committed to stay. And then Mosby Felder makes the catch. But it's going to get harder. And they're going to lose good players. The scholarship numbers are going to go down. They have four years of this with which to deal. So you wonder if they'll be able to recruit when players know if they come here, they're not going to play in a bowl game, at least not till the very end of their career. You know what? Because they can't miss on recruits, and it's almost impossible to do. McGloin lofts it up. Robinson did a good job to kind of earn the call. By climbing back for the ball over Travis Howard. That's tough on a defensive back and a great job of awareness by Robinson, as you said. Pass interference, defense number seven. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. You see right here, Robinson seeing that ball going up, knowing he probably doesn't have a shot at it, but drawing the pass interference. And I, that's a smart football player, but that's a reflection of good coaching. And that's not a bad job by Travis either. First and goal, Penn State. Poised to score again, but down by 19 with 2.20 to go. McGloin lost the football. Ryan Shazier knocked it out. Donovan Smith, the left tackle. Got it back. He's another of those second-year players, redshirt freshmen, who's committed to stay. They haven't picked up Ryan all night. Every time he's blitzed, he's kind of come free right here. I'm sorry, right here. Excuse me. They haven't picked him up all night, and it's easy to make sacks and blitzes and pressures when they don't block you. But he's a good football player. He's really upped his game as the season's gone on. Boyne stepped into the throw, one of his best of the night fundamentally, and it's a touchdown to Kyle Carter. Just when they sing Ryan Shazier's praises, he lets the tight end go free, putting Christian Bryant on an island, and Matt McGloin targeted Carter the whole time. Second touchdown pass of the night for Matt McGloin. 327 yards is also a career high for McGloin. But it's going to be in a loss. Barring incredible drama in the final 141. Ficken adds the extra point. 141 to go. Ohio State leads by 12. Tomorrow night on ESPN and ESPNU, join Reese Davis along with Kirk Herbstreit, Jesse Palmer, and David Pollock. They'll unveil the New BCS poll and analyze the contenders and contenders. BCS countdown presented by Vizio tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Continue on ESPNU at 9 Eastern time. Onside kick set up for Penn State. Thicken. Bounces one. Took a great bounce for Penn State. And it winds up back with Bradley Roby. He's been the right man in the yeah. right spot all night long. I'm just impressed with the play by number 10, Malcolm Willis. This is outstanding. Punched it back in, but they couldn't get it. Here's Reese Davis. 
All right, John, Oklahoma, Notre Dame on ABC. Sooners up 3-0. Irish looking at a second and five. And Sierra Wood, nobody home for the Sooners in the middle. A career-long 62-yard run. Fighting Irish on top 7-3 in the first. They've done a great job, Brian Kelly and Bob Yako, with a wonderful defense. They're reviewing the kickoff. <laughs> they might be reviewing the talk about Malcolm Willis. I wonder if he was out of bounds. They sort of punched the ball back in. Excellent kick by Ficken. Like a good play. I don't know if his left foot. And what's the big deal? I mean, they're quibbling about a yard, I suppose. Uh, he might have been out yeah. there. Then his left foot's out. But anyway, that's a good play. I mean, those little details, and you see it from both sides, is, is a sign of good coaching. You see it obviously with Urban Meyer and the, the job that he does with his players, and of course, Bill Bryan, we've talked about. And, when players execute the fundamentals of the game under pressure, that's a sign of good coaching. The defensive struggle through most of the first half. To join us late, Penn State scored first on a block punt. Ohio State couldn't move the ball. Their first six drives all ended in punts. One of those was blocked for a Penn State touchdown. Then you think about perhaps the biggest play of the game, the holding penalty against Penn State. When Ohio State was punting, gave the ball back to Ohio State. They marched down the field, took advantage of the break, and scored. Ohio State's ball, first down. And they've scored four touchdowns in the last five drives. Yeah, the other thing to think about, too, is the missed opportunities that Penn State had in the beginning of the ball game. The underthrow to Allen Robinson was wide open for six. And Obing Ajapong had a pick six that he dropped. Mm -hmm. From the 49. Carlos Hyde swung down by Sean Stanley. Loss on the play of a yard. The timeout called by Penn State with 1.32 to go. We talk about what a great job Bill O'Brien has done, and the same is certainly true of Urban Meyer. You know, last year, speculation Urban Meyer might be the coach at Penn State. And obviously, being a native of Ohio, that was a very appealing opportunity to go back where he started his coaching career. And I think also, even though there were the sanctions at Ohio State, obviously that situation much less messy than what was happening and is happening here. Well, I had to, I, I think the honor to spend uh, the year with Coach Meyer last year in the broadcast booth. And observing him the whole year, you knew he was going to get back into coaching because every place that we went, that he would go to coaches, he would write things down, he would write plays down, he'd always be discussing and talking about the game. And especially on Friday nights, John, he started getting a little itch every time in Saturday mornings he had the big itch. In fact, we climbed Mount Nittany over there before Penn State game last year. Braxton Miller slides down, short of the first down. Braxton Miller, the ball carrier. Penn State used his last time out. Miller didn't get the first down, but he stayed in bounds with the slide and forced Penn State to use the last time out. Did you look at the remaining schedule for Ohio State? Another thing, people always ask me because, you know, I have a relationship with Urban. It's no secret. How's he doing? How's he handling getting back into coaching? And, you know, when I see him and talk to him and some of the offseason issues that they have that every school has, he's more relaxed. And I think he manages things better, and he understands stepping away from it for a year that ultimately it's just football. Mm -hmm. There's other things in life, and I think it took that little scare for him to realize that he's going to be okay. Just enjoy what you do. Enjoy the journey. Well, what does it say about you and Dave Pash that you know, coaching was ruining Urban's health, but he decided to go back <laughs> into it after one year with you two? Exactly. Now, well, believe me, I can relate to how he feels. Well, this is our second go around. We're reunited, so you separated from me once, but I'm back. Carlos Hyde, the ball carrier. They get a first down. This one is all but over. This week on Monday Night Football on ESPN, a classic NFC West matchup. 49ers and the Cardinals in Arizona. 8:30 Monday night with coverage beginning at 6:30. Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's.
Now they're in the victory formation. They will go to nine at all. We mentioned last time they were 10 and 0 was 2007. They played for the national championship at the end of that year. They are very likely to be 10 and 0. We saw the schedule upcoming Illinois next. And they'll be the only undefeated team now in the leaders division of the Big Ten. Well, Illinois is terrible. I'd be shocked if <laughs> yeah. uh, that wasn't a route. Next yeah. Week. And then they'll have the bye week and a tough Wisconsin team. And of course, the uh, the big game, which I had the honor of doing last year, would be the Ohio State Michigan game and that battle between Braxton Miller and Bernard Robinson. Well, that could be a very entertaining end of the season. Michigan is the only other team undefeated in Big Ten play entering that game that's going on with Nebraska right now. So Penn State's five game winning streak is over and Ohio State is 9 and 0. One of eight undefeated teams remaining in the country. They're the only one that has nine wins. They have not had a bye week yet. And Quint Kessnick, <laughs> former colleague of Urban Meyer, has his old pal's attention. Quint. Coach, congratulations. Uh, great to see you smile. 7-7 nice seven, nice seven at halftime. What was the turning point in the second half? Oh, I think we uh, we we no huddled their D-line. They have a very good defensive line, and we felt like the best chance we had was to wear them out a little bit and, on our line. But, our, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why we won. Uh, but we kind of wore out the D-line a little bit. How would you best characterize the way Braxton played in the second half? I think he played great. I think our offensive line played very good. Once again, you're, you're playing an excellent defensive line, and, and our guys blocked him decently. Thanks, Coach. And Miller wound up throwing for 143 and rushing for 134. Final score, Ohio State 35, Penn State 23. Coming up next on ESPN, college football action continues. The number one team of the country, Alabama, taking on undefeated Mississippi State. Thanks for joining us. So long from State College. Now to Tuscaloosa.